Hello and welcome also from me. My name is Katharina Menschik and I'm very happy and grateful to have been invited to present you some photographs, archival documents and excerpts from a video today in order to give you a short introduction to Eva Kollisch's biography before um, we start discussing the book, The Ground Under My Feet today. Eva Kollisch was born in Vienna in 1925. Uh, and grew up in Baden by Wien, which is a small town very close uh, to Vienna, together with her younger brother Peter and her older brother Stephen. Their mother, Margarete Kollisch, was a very well educated woman, especially given the time that she lived in. She had studied philology at the University of Vienna and then was working as a teacher, translator, journalist, and above all, she was also a writer and a poet. She has published multiple collections of poetry, also after the family's emigration to the United States. And one of them, Wege und Einkehr, um, is uh, pictured here on the right side. Um, it's the cover of the book in the collection of the Leo Beck Institute. Margarete Kollisch, uh, once uh, she was in New York, was also a very um, active member of the literary scene of German-speaking and Austrian poets at the time in New York and the United States. Eva Kollisch's father, Otto, was an architect and um, a manager of a construction company. And among other projects, he was very involved in the construction of residential buildings in the spirit of Red Vienna at the time when a lot of effort was put into building afford affording um, residential housing. One of the buildings that he designed is the Semperhof that is still um, in Vienna today in the 18th district. And you can see an image of it here. Eva Kollisch uh, went to high school in Baden and she was 12 and a half years old um, in March 1938 when during the so-called Anschluss Austria became a part of Nazi Germany um, accompanied by massive outbreaks of anti-Semitic violence in Austria. Eva Kollisch was expelled from her school and went to Vienna to a Jewish boarding school, the Bondiheim. And she writes about um, these experience also in the ground under my feet. At the same time, Eva's parents were preparing the family's escape from Austria. And they managed to get their children on a kinder transport that left in July 1939 to England. The kinder transports were a rescue effort by which about 10,000 children could escape Nazi Germany in 38 and 39. Also, um, Otto Kollisch managed to escape to England, but he could not live with his children because they had to stay with different foster families. And at the same time, Margarete Kollisch, um, their mother and wife, was still stuck in Vienna. Um, she had problems to get all the paperwork um, ready in a way that was accepted for um, emigration. And as you saw in the book, Eva Kollisch um, attached some of the correspondence between her parents from that time to the book. And I therefore want to now show you um, two of these um, uh, letters um, from the Margarete College collection at the Leo Beck Institute. The first one is a postcard sent from Margarete, who was still in Vienna, to Otto um, in London. Um, she's writing about how difficult the situation is because the consulate is closed. Um, and at the same time, she says that it's important now to stay, to, to, to wait calmly and to not lose one's head over the, the difficult circumstances. This is um, the first page of a very long letter from Otto to Margarete. 
as you can see on the letterhead, he was already on the ship that would finally bring him to the United States while he was writing the letter. He's reporting about how he lived through the outbreak of World War II that had happened two weeks earlier. Um, he's writing about how he experienced that time in England and how he managed to finally be able to leave the country to get the ticket and how desperate he is that he has to leave without her knowing that she's still in Vienna, not knowing how she will manage to leave. I also want to show you a third letter uh, written by Eva to her father. Um, as mentioned before, she could not live with him. Um, the siblings were with different foster families. And so um, Eva is writing to him how hard it is for her to know that her mother is still stuck in Austria. And at the same time, she says that her dad must not, you must not um, be too upset. We, the three of us, need a healthy dad and mom needs a healthy husband. And she ends the letter by saying, so dad, keep your head up and one billion zillion kisses, Eva. Margarete Kollisch um, finally managed to escape um, to the United States via Holland in October and November 1939. And a couple of months later, in March 1940, the children could also join them in the United States. And so here is an image of Eva and Peter on the ship that would finally bring them to New York where they were reunited with their parents in Staten Island. And now I want to show you an excerpt from a video interview in which Eva Kollisch um, talks about what happened once they were in Staten Island. Oh, I went to high school in Staten Island and I uh, had a couple of years of very uh, sort of uninteresting years <coughs> in high school. <coughs> but it was safe. Nobody beat me up and nobody called me Jew bastard or anything like that. And then toward the end of my second year, I met a, a bunch of Trotskyists. And uh, they ma made a big impression on me. Of course, I didn't know Trotsky from Stalinists at that time. I didn't know the whole history but I liked them very much. With Stanley and with this original training in Trotskyism, Marxism, Socialism, I found a kind of a home, an intellectual home, and a home for my own sense of injustice and wanting to, to make things right, making them okay, that they were far from okay. After Eva Kollisch had joined the movement, the Workers' Party, she went to Detroit where she was working in a car factory and a very active member of the union organizing the workers at the factory. And in 2000, she published her memoir, Girl in Movement, in which she writes about exactly that time from arriving in Staten Island to her time in Detroit as a worker in the car factory. In the late 1940s, Eva Kollisch went back to New York. She attended Brooklyn College and together with her second husband, Gerd Berliner, with whom she has a son, Uri. She was a founder of the Café Rienzi in Greenwich Village in Manhattan. The café was run collectively by nine friends, Eva Kollisch, Gerd Berliner and other friends. Um, and it soon became sort of a hub of the intellectual cultural scene of New York at the time. James Baldwin and Bob Dylan, for example, were guests there. And it was one of many um, collective projects that um, Eva Kollisch was part of um, and still is. Um, at the same time, Eva Kollisch pursued her academic career. 
she went to Brooklyn College and then continued um, to uh, at Columbia University, where she did her graduate degree in German and comparative literature. And uh, she soon would then become a teacher and professor herself. And I want to show you another excerpt from the interview in which she will talk about her time as a professor. After I was at Brooklyn College for a couple of years, there was an opening at Sarah Lawrence, and I was invited to come and apply. And I heard about the school, and I said, this sounds like a snobbish school. This sounds like a rich girl school. I don't know if I can take that. And my chairman said, do it. Do it for the experience, for a year or two. So I went, and I got there, and I loved it. It was a wonderful school. The girls were wonderful. And uh, I didn't know education could be like that, so intense and yet so friendly. And so, so out of the one year, two years, I stayed 30 years. And sometimes I felt I shouldn't be teaching in a school of such privilege because, uh, you know, most people don't have that privilege. And I felt guilty, but. At the same time, I did so much to wake up these girls, and I taught them. And then the, the anti-war movement started, and I was very involved with that. Demonstrations, getting arrested. <coughs> and my students, who liked me very much, followed, and they went on the demonstrations. They became radical. So I figured I wasn't just goofing off, you know. <laughs> Um, I think it's fair and important to say that um, Eva Koller's political activism was part of everything else um, she did and does in her life. And another example for that is that um, while being a professor at Sarah Lawrence together with um, some other colleagues and Gerda Lerner, they developed and founded the first program in women's studies in the United States, and it was introduced in 1972 at Sarah Lawrence. In addition to her involvement with feminism, Eva Kollisch um, is also a very active um, pacifist, anti-racist. She's involved um, in queer activism, in environmentalism, and um, for the past um, decade, um, she shares her activism and her life with her partner, the poet Naomi Replansky. And here we can see Naomi Replansky and Eva Kollisch at the award ceremony for the Clara Lemlich Awards for social activism, which um, both of them received in 2016. And in order to also very briefly um, introduce you to Naomi Replansky, I want to play a short video in which she recites her poem, An Inheritance, which she also presented at this award ceremony in 2016. $5, $4, $3, $2, $1, and none, and what do we do? This is the worry that never got said, but ran so often in my mother's head and showed so plain in my father's frown that to us kids it drifted down. It drifted down like soot, like snow, in the dream-tossed Bronx in the, young, in the long ago. I shook it off with a shake of the head I bounced my ball, I ate warm bread, I skated down the steepest hill, but I must have listened against my will. When the wind blows wrong, I can hear it today. Then my mother's worry stops all play, and as if in its rightful place, my father's frown divides my face. Eva Kollisch and Naomi Replansky live in the Upper West Side in Manhattan. 
And um, very recently, um, they were visited by a uh, reporter from the New York Times who asked them about their life during the pandemic. And Eva Kollisch reported that she's currently working with the Museum of Jewish Heritage because she will be featured in an exhibition that will open in 2021. And Naomi Replansky um, told that she's currently rereading the brothers Karamazov. Thank you very much for your attention and thank you again for inviting me. Um, Eva's college work really means a lot to me and I'm very, very grateful that I could talk about her life now briefly. Thank you very much. <laughs>